Yo, what's going on, everybody, to this new video? So, what this is going to be in this video is you're like, how do I make a Fortnite cheat, right? And the answer isn't so simple. You can't just watch a tutorial, learn, do it yourself, takes a few hours, yada yada. No, this is a very dedicated, lifelong journey that you'll go through. And you'll go through hell, and you'll go through heaven, and then you'll go back to hell. Um, it's gonna be an up and down journey. Uh, so the first, I want to start pumping out like really good quality videos that actually teaches you a lot next week. But first, this week, I need to pump out some videos that teaches C plus plus, but how it can be a bit like basic C plus plus, and how it can be applied to game hacking. How it can be used to make a Fortnite cheat, because Right now, if you just watch C++ tutorials, it's just like random shit that it's applying it to. And you're like learning C++, but you're like, how do I apply this to making a Fortnite cheat? So this is like a learning C++ video, but I'm going to show you how it can be applied to making a cheat. Um, And then, so this is like a good video. So like, if you don't really, if you kind of know C++, but you really don't, and you like really need to learn the basics it's good to kind of like watch this video and you're like okay now you have a grasp of what you need to learn and then you can actually watch like an official video and start hammer that out and be like okay so now i know c plus plus and now i have this video which kind of teaches me how i kind of kind of apply it um but the first so i'm gonna start with the basics uh we're gonna do a lot of stuff so one variables you need to learn what a variable is so i'm going to be teaching then after you know variables you need to know mm, you need to know a list or slash array i guess we'll, we'll just call it array arrays and then three four loops and then four functions by parameters six structures yeah let's go ahead and i'm gonna go ahead and say we're gonna learn all of this probably gonna split it up this so this is just gonna be the first introductory video and then probably like tomorrow and thursday i'll do these two together and I'll do these two together, and then I'll probably do this on its own, and probably find a way, I'll probably find something to pair it with, so there'll probably be a seventh, what could it be, what could the seventh be, um, seventh could be like, tying it all together plus classes yeah that sounds good uh yeah we'll do that so we're just variables for this video and then i'll do the rest so first variables right so inside a game it's just it's just an empty project uh you can make uh so first let's say there's an integer, which is a whole number. So like, let's say the player ID, like the game keeps tracks of a player ID equals, bam, just a random number, right? Uh, and then we can go ahead and show you printing this out. So this will print it to the console. And we'll just throw in a player ID, bam, bam. All right, so if we run this, Bam. Alright, so now we printed the player ID to the console. So a variable is just a way to store a value. And then also with this value, you can manipulate it, right? So to subtract 3 from this value, you'll just be like player minus equals 3. So that says player equals player minus 3. And then you can print that. And you'll see. Bam, it's subtracted three, right? 
So now we have that variable and we can manip manipulate the, the data, right? Well, there's gonna be some different data types. We'll say float position x player position x equals three point that. There we go. Now it printed this. So instead of an int, we now use a float, which means it can now have decimals. And then if we change it to a double, so Fortnite uses Unreal Engine 5. So, like, whenever a player's position is stored, you'd be like, okay, it would be a float instead of an int, right? Uh, but it's actually a double, which just means it can hold. A bigger value so it could be like this so now the game is like super precise damn it did not want to print all of that it just rounded look chat it rounded i wonder why it rounded so i need to add a point f no it's a double but F. How do I make it not round? What about casting? Double. That's good. We should probably learn casting chat. Casting is good. Huh. Probably have to use print F. Anyway. Uh. It has this value. But. I'm only printing the first few. You can see it's rounding. It's just rounding up. Uh, however, if we like cast it to an integer, what's gonna happen is it's gonna completely ignore this, and it's only gonna print thirty nine eighty four. So that's what casting does. It looks like lets you change the variable data type. Rn, bam. Okay. So now we know about the different variables. You know what? Let's go ahead and do arrays and for loops. Okay. You know, let's just fucking do it all on this video because we're fucking chads, alright? We're doing all of this shit. Okay? So let's say. Gonna comment this out real quick. Gonna learn what a structure is. Okay, let's let's just learn what a structure is real quick. So struct. Um fucking we'll just say player put struct player data. Okay. So now we can have BAM no we don't do that we don't set the value and bam bam change this bam right okay so now we have a structure defined and so what we can say is we can create a variable with that structure we can just say player now Okay. Why am I setting the values? Chat, not real. Now we can say player dot player ID equals this and then that. So fucking retarded. Mm -hmm. And we'll paste that again. Wait, so Y is just gonna have another random number. Right, and then we add the prefix, right? 
and then we can print it. So now you're like, okay, okay, so we had all these variables defined right here. Why would we put it in a structure? Okay, so we're gonna run it. Okay, and it's gonna print it because we set it to that value. So you're gonna be like, well, why? Why would we do that? Why, you may ask? Because now we can have a lot of players, so let's say we have multiple players, right? We'd have to like, bam, 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 bam. One, 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 two, 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 three, 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 three. You see how like repetitive this is? Very repetitive, right? But if we all store it inside a structure, then we can just do Player one, and then copy that two, and then three. So this is the same thing as what we just did. However, now it's only three lines of code because the variable is multiple variables. It's crazy. So now what we can do is we can learn about arrays and for loops. And then I'll show you how you tie all this together. <laughs> so let's say you're gonna have multiple players, right? So int array players equals chat. Maybe not this. Maybe it's this. Yeah, there it is. Sorry, I don't like use this one array. Oh, I'm about to show you what I use. So you would say one, two, three, All right? So we have three players in here. So you would define the size of the array like this. And then players ID, whatever. Uh, and then you could say player ID equals bam. So to access that, you do, so this is the zero, one, and two position of the array. So like where it is inside the array, this is in the zeroth index, this is in the first index. So let's say if you wanted the second player in this array, it would be one, because it would be zero, one. So now what this is gonna print, well, let's go ahead and make it random numbers so it's easier to. All right, there we go. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna go zero, one, two for the positions of the array. So it's gonna get zero, one. So it should print five, four, seven right here. Yep. And then you can do that for the rest, right? I'm like freestyling this video. I don't really know what I'm supposed to be teaching you, honestly. I did not plan this out. Okay. So that's just a just traditional way. And then you could also be like layer ID, the first that for the first index actually now equals that. And it will show that change. See? However, what if you're like, actually, I, there's a fourth player now, and he's going to have this value. So now you want to print the fourth one, right? Guess what? Not real. Not real, chat. I'm being pranked right now. What the fuck? Yeah, it's supposed to. I'm so confused. I think the compiler like auto fixed the error for me. That's so slay of it. Anyway, that would not work because we already, it already has a set size, right? So you can't just do that. That's where uh, STD vector comes in. And then we'll just say 
int players id uh, you're gonna have to include this up here right so now what we can do is we can just do you could do the same thing as before to define it or you could just do dot push back bam 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 uh, All right, so it should be zero, one, two. So it should print this, right? And it did. So what this is saying, this is an array. However, you can think of it as, it's a class. You can just think of it as, it's dynamic now. So it can uh, have, well, it has a set size, but will auto, well, kind of won't, well, pushback does. Anyway. That's a lot of teaching. You should probably know it. I'm not going to teach. I'm going to skip that stuff. Whatever. Uh, you can also print the size of the array now. So dot size. Bam. So the size of the array should be three since there's three elements in this array. Right. We're just matching the size. But yeah, so the size of the array is three. Okay. So now let's say we want to print all of the IDs in the array. However, instead of using three lines like this, this is so gay right here. So this is how you can print all of them, right? However, you could use Dun 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 a for loop. So what we're gonna say is for int i equals zero i is less than players id dot size i plus plus. Let me go ahead and show you. Let's just print i. So this is gonna run. So it starts at zero and it's going to run until it's less. So like the player size is three. So I should print zero, one, and two, right? Correct. Because it's going to, so it's going to run this and then it's going to increment I. I plus plus means like I plus equal one. It's like adding one to the variable I. And it's going to keep running and executing until it reaches the condition variable right here. So you're going to be like, okay, that's cool. But uh, what's really the point? Well, the point is we can do int player id equals this at the i element. And then you can print the player ID. So now with the for loop we just printed instead of having three print statements we use the for loop to print all of them. And you're like okay okay now we're getting somewhere. So let's say it's your Fortnite cheat right? Okay. What you can do is you can read all the players so like let's say for example like the player's position is stored inside of Fortnite and there's memory. So what we do is we read the position from memory and we make an array and then we use a for loop to loop through all the positions and we draw a box around all of the positions, right? So that's what we're doing in essence right here. Okay. <laughs> So first, we're going to make, I'm going to skip this. Let's go ahead and make our first, well, not really our first, our second structure. Structure, struct a vector, vector three, right? 
and it's going to be double x, y, and z. Bam, that's it. That's it. So now this is the position, the player's x position, y position, and z position. And so in the actual cheat, it's going to read the world location, which is x, y, z, to vector 3, right? Because it's on a 3D coordinate plane, the game is. It's not a 2D game, it's a 3D game. So it's going to do this, and then the cheat's also going to read, like, your camera's location, rotation, the FOV of the camera. And it's going to use that to do some math, and it's going to convert the XYZ coordinate into an XY coordinate, because your monitor is 2D, right? The game is 3D, but your monitor is 2D. So whenever you draw a box, you need to draw the box around the 2D position of the player, not the 3D position. So it converts the world location to the screen location. That's what Project World to Screen is. But for this, we're just going to stick with Vector 3. Um, so let's go ahead and tie it all together now. So now we're going to say Struct Player Data Bam, and it's going to have an int ID, and then it's going to have a vector 3 position. Bam, and then we could even say like std string name. And then we're going to make an array. So std vector. This is an array of the player data. Uh, and then we'll say players. And then we're going to loop through all the players for i equals zero. I is less than layers dot size and I plus plus. Now you can do like shot slash draw box, but we'll just print the data for examples of this theoretical scenario. Player position. Wait, we have to make player data player equals players the i index bam and then we can do position bam bam and then you can't really print a vector through both print the x coordinate. We'll do y. We'll do y for example. So y is position dot y. Bam. And then we'll also do we'll add in the name first. So like player dot name bam bam position y. <laughs> Parameters is a good thing to know. I don't know how I tie it in RN, RN. But let's go ahead and do functions. So, we're going to make a function that basically says it's just going to generate hypothetical scenario data. Bam. So this function 
It's just going to give us some random data to loop through. All right. Boom. 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 Now we need the return type first. So it's going to return an array of the player data. Just like this. Which means we have a scope issue. So we actually have to move this. It doesn't know what player data is. So we have to move it above. Just like such. Bam. And then... We can just fill in some random data. Layer dot one dot ID will set random. So I'm just making literally hypothetical scenarios so you can show I can show you this in action. Bam uh, dot name uh we'll say this player's name is Joe. And then we'll say his name is And then position equals folks. I should work. Don't have an initializer constructor. <laughs> Fuck that. We'll just do this. Someone should teach you that I'm like literally skipping over RN. That works. Where did this come from? There we go. Copy this and then change all of it. So this guy's name is going to be Frank. He's going to have a random player ID and a random position. And then we're going to append or push back player one push back player two and return players bam done so this is just going to re return the hypothetical data scenario and we're going to run it and you can see that and so, Frank, well, Joe has a position Y of this. Frank has a position Y of that. And so, you're like, that's cool, but you don't really see the point of for loops and all that quite yet. Uh, that's because it's only two hypothetical data people I made up. In a match, there's going to be like 100 people. So, you're going to read the data from the game, make an array, fill up all of the... I fill up the array, right? And it's gonna have stored the player data and an array. So now you can kinda see how it can kinda tie into game hacking. So this is just like random data. In a Fortnite cheat we're actually gonna read that data from the game. Uh a really I guess I can do five and seven in the next video later this week. This is kind of a mid video, honestly. I thought it'd turn out a little better, but I didn't really script anything, so it's kind of freestyle, kind of mid, honestly. 
I helped you learn, but at the same time, completely understand if you didn't. I skipped through a lot of things, didn't explain a lot of things the best I could. Uh, but hopefully you can kind of grasp how you can use C++ to make a cheat now. So that's going to be it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. You probably didn't. It was kind of boring. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be uploading a lot of videos. So, peace.